It's the middle of winter and it is cold outside. We've had so much snow, but that means it's time to start seeds. To start our seeds, we are going to use a hothouse. It's really easy to get online, and it's got everything inside that you need, except for the seeds, so it's a complete kit. We've got two separate plastic domes. Today, we're just going to use the two-inch dome once we start our seeds in here, and as the seeds germinate and start to grow into plants, then we're going to switch it to the six-inch dome. It comes with a heating mat here seeds germinate at a particular temperature and every seed is different. The seeds we're gonna start today need to be between 70 and 75 degrees. Now, you see these little pellets here? I'm gonna add water to them and they're gonna expand and that's what we're gonna use. Add about 30 ounces of warm water. Once they're done expanding, we're gonna empty out any excess water that's still in here. The first seeds I start every single year are flowers. Because I'm in New England, I have a shorter growing season, so I want to get them growing into strong, healthy plants before I bring them outside. I am going to be starting amaranth seeds. Some varieties are edible, and they're used in Africa, China, South America, Central America. The leaves are used in stir fries or stews, and the amaranth seeds are also used as a grain. Now, when you have super tiny seeds like this, that means you really just want to sow them right on the surface of the soil. But the rule of thumb when you're starting seeds is you want to line up three of the seeds in a row, and that is the depth that you want to plant them. You've probably seen amaranth in people's gardens or in community gardens as you're going by. You probably haven't ever eaten it, but it's also really fragrant. I've found it in different types of soaps or lotions. These are tiny seeds. Now I am going to plant some golden amaranth. Golden amaranth is a true grain. This is the one that is usually eaten. Look at that, it kind of looks like wheat. And it looks a little bit like quinoa as well. Heirloom seeds have a much lower germination rate. So if I start 100 of these particular heirloom seeds, I'm only going to get about 50 of those seeds to start germinating. That's if I'm lucky. So I want to make sure that as I'm going through, I'm going to start about two to three seeds in every single cell. The last thing we're going to plant are coxcomb flowers. They're actually part of the amaranth family, so they're cousins to the amaranth. I'm going to start a row back here. Our seeds are planted in the cells, and the next thing we have to do is spray them with a spray bottle and just give them a little bit of mist. A lot of times people will start seeds and place them on a windowsill, but you really don't want to do that because that is a cold area in your home. Also, winter sunlight, it's going to be spotty at best. So I am going to set up a grow light on top of our hothouse. This is just a small two-foot stand. <laughs> want this light to be on for 12 hours a day, we are going to set up a timer. That is going to keep it on for 12 hours and off for 12 hours. We want to make sure that that light is as close to the seeds as possible as they start germinating. If it's any higher, what's going to happen is your plants are going to start to germinate, and then they're going to reach up for that sunlight, making them very leggy and making that stem completely weak. been a little over a week and our seeds are starting to germinate and it looks like this seed starting kit is going to work great. Mm -hmm. 